British suicide bombers murder three people in a bar in Tel Aviv. 52 die in the London bombings. Hundreds would have died had the fertilizer bombers succeeded. More than 30 terrorist plots are now under active investigation. The old idea was that the plots were the work of isolated terrorist cells. But this is a myth. We will reveal tonight the connections between the terror attacks. And this form of tahrid al jihad, form of inside people to do jihad, inside people to hate the North Many of the plots link back to these men, Omar Bakri Mohammed and Abu Hamza. Newsnight has plotted the connections between those behind the attacks and an international network of Islamist extremists emerges, which has its origins with the radical preachers in the UK. Let's go across here to 9-11. The so-called 20th hijacker, Zacharias Massawi, the shoe bomber, Richard Reed, the second shoe bomber, Sajed Badat, all worshipped at Finsbury Park Mosque with Abu Hamza. Sheikh Bakri Mohammed introduced the leader of the fertilizer bomb plot, Omar Khayyam, to extreme political Islam and jihad. Bakri Mohammed's group, Al Mahajroon, were active in Omar Khayyam's hometown of Crawley. Supporters set up stalls, handed out leaflets, and fly posted the streets. The message they wanted to create an Islamic state right here in the UK. In the search for new recruits, Bakri Mohammed sought out the places where young people were. He even managed to get invited to Omar Khayyam's school to lead a sixth form assembly. He came and talked to the sixth form and afterwards people said, you know who he is? And uh, we said, well, not really. We understand he's an Islamic cleric. Oh yes, but uh, there are clerics and clerics was the sort of response. And um, the governing body then um, got interested and said, well, in the same way that there are is a, a, a spectrum of, of uh, belief within Christianity, so it is in Islam, and you have just picked someone who represents one end of that spectrum in Islam. Knowing what I know now, it was a bad decision, and it was all my fault. I'm not blaming anybody else. I had invited him in, and uh, I accept that, yes, it was probably not a wise thing to do. You know, On the day Omar Khayyam and the other terrorist suspects were arrested, we spoke with his uncle Sajad Ahmad, who was angry about the activities of Al Mahajaroon. I think we've done as much as we can. When uh, this organisation came to Crawley, they um, they went to the mosque. They talked at the mosque. That was banned. That was not allowed. Um, they then started uh, hiring um, halls, community halls. Uh, we put an end to that. Uh, then they started putting stickers and handing out leaflets. We tried to put an end to that, and I, think, I believe we succeeded. But Bakri Mohammed's ambitions were greater than preaching in schools. By the late 1990s, he decided to set up overseas branches of Al Mahajaroon. He sent envoys to New York and to Pakistan. And we can reveal these support networks, which grew out of Al Mahajaroon in the UK, were used by virtually every British jihadist who travelled out for terrorist training and was instrumental in facilitating links with Al-Qaeda. In 1999, Bakri Mohammed sent a special envoy to New York to help win international support for al Mahajaroon. This man is Sajil Shaheed. There, he met Mohammed Janaid Baba, the American Muslim extremist who was to go on to become the prosecution's supergrass. Meanwhile, Sajil's brother, Adil Shaheed, set up a branch of al Mahajroon in Pakistan. They were there for jihad. They wanted to overthrow the government of Pakistan as a first step in the creation of a worldwide Islamic state or caliphate. Adil Shaheed set up an office in this building in Lahore. Sajil soon joined him and came into contact with friends of Osama bin Laden. You see, Osama bin Laden, I know him very well. I met him maybe over 100 times. I lived with him. I dealt with him. And in fact, we did jihad together. As far as jihad is concerned, jihad is a primary duty of a Muslim. Any Muslim who does not believe in jihad, he ceases to be a Muslim. Mr. Sajil Shahid was promoting jihad, so it is not only Mr. Sajil Shahid. Any true Muslim has to promote jihad. If he doesn't, he should not call himself a Muslim. He is a hypocrite. With Al Mahajroon's support network in place, jihadists began to arrive from the UK. 
Omar Khayyam, the leader of the fertilizer bomb plot, turned up in Pakistan in the year 2000. He spent three months training with weapons in Kashmir. In December 2000, Britain's first suicide bomber, Bilal Mohammed, stayed in safe houses linked to Al Mahajroon in Pakistan before blowing himself up in Kashmir. We go there to condemn. The leader of Al Mahajroon, Bakri Mohammed, proudly announced he'd been one of his recruits. Mohammed Sadiq Khan, the leader of the London bombers, arrived in 2001. He stayed at an Al Mahajroon flat. After 9-11, the trickle of foreign jihadists turned into a flow. Kazi Rahman, who was later convicted of buying Uzi submachine guns in the UK. Omar Sheikh, the former London School of Economics student who went on to murder the American journalist Daniel Pearl. And Mohammed Sadiq Khan. Salahuddin Amin, who is convicted today for his part in the Crawley fertilizer bomb plot. And Junaid Barber, who arrived from New York, who said then he was willing to kill American troops in Afghanistan. I can't stand by and live in America while my Muslims are being bombed in Afghanistan. I have a responsibility towards them. You know, my loyal I say my loyalty is towards them. Now it's time to prove my loyalty to the Muslim Afghanistan. What the British expatriate jihadists really needed was cover to move around the country, especially into the tribal areas separating Pakistan and Afghanistan. That was where the Al-Qaeda contacts were. They used the Pakistan state-owned computer company as the perfect cover. In 2002, the Pakistan Software Export Board appointed a new managing director, Sahail Shaheed, the brother of the man running Al Mahajaroon, Sajil Shaheed. Sajil was given freelance IT work by the PSEB. Government guest houses were used for visiting radicals, and jihadi websites were run using servers linked to the company. Junaid Barber was posted to the northwest frontier town of Peshawar close to the tribal areas where Al-Qaeda and Taliban forces were based. He used access at PSEB to forge government passes to help him and his jihadi friends travel around. Janae Barber supplied three PSEB computers to the Crawley bomb conspirators. Sahail Shaheed says he knew nothing about what was going on. I pushed from the start to keep anybody from al Mahajroon away from the company. It's pure rubbish that PSEB was being exploited by jihadists, he said. The networks continued to strengthen. The Iraq war in 2003 prompted another wave of recruits. Two British members of Al Mahajroon, Asif Hanif and Omar Sharif, launched a suicide attack on a bar in Tel Aviv. They were associates of the leader of the London bombers, Mohammed Sadiq Khan. Britain was exporting bombers across the world, and many had been radicalized by extremist preachers like Bakri Mohammed and Abu Hamza. The British taken their land, they kicked them out, they armed the Jews, and they let them to kill them until now for the last 60 years. But back in the UK, there was no sign that the intelligence services or their political masters were taking the threat seriously enough. So in other words, we'll let these um, bearded chappies preach their, their, their poison in London, but nothing will happen here. I mean, their poison will spread a, a abroad and people will use that. Uh, and the money that they're collecting to uh, finance attacks or, or various things abroad, but it won't happen here. Uh, now, even at the time, most other intelligence services, the French in particular, told us that this was madness. Back in Pakistan, Sajil Shaheed and Junaid Barber, the supergrass, traveled to the northwest frontier in 2003 to set up a training camp. This was the camp where the Crawley plotters met Mohammed Sadiq Khan. Late last year, MI5 estimated that 3,000 suspects were under surveillance in the UK and 30 plots were under investigation. We've shown how many individuals connected to this were helped by Al Mahajroon's networks in Pakistan. So we wanted to ask Sajil Shaheed, the leader of Al Mahajroon in Pakistan, to explain his work abroad. We found out he was back in the UK last year, but when he failed to respond to our requests for an interview, we traced him to this Islam exhibition in London. Are you Sajil Shaheed? It's bit Richard Watson from BBC Newsnight here. We've been trying to contact you to ask some questions. The one question we want to ask you really is, were you involved in helping terrorists in Pakistan? No, I wasn't. What were you doing in Pakistan? Just studying. You were studying? No you were leader, comments. You were leader no of Al Mahajroon, no weren't comments. you? You were leader of Al Mahajroon. No, I wasn't. You were? It's clearly on your website. I wasn't. And were you helping uh, terrorist suspects in Pakistan? Or I not? wasn't. And were you leading Al Mahajroon in Pakistan? 
We're told you are leading Al Mahadrin in Pakistan, Mr. Shaheed. Mr. Shaheed, why won't you answer our questions? They're very basic questions, Mr. Shaheed. Because you just create propaganda. Why do you think it's propaganda? Because you're creating propaganda. You're asking the wrong question. I said I, I don't have anything to do with it. But you were the head of Al Mahadrin. I wasn't. Tracing the backgrounds of jihadists reveals there are patterns to be discovered. They're all linked, many by association with Al Mahadrun and radical preachers like Bakri Mohammed and Abu Hamza. The so-called hate preachers, you can, you can plot their networks and the effect of radicalization they had across the UK and across the globe. And I think it was appallingly arrogant and a huge failure of imagination not to take these people seriously. I also think it was amoral to assume that it was okay for guys to plot jihad in other lands and to have your safety at the expense of other people's lives. That not in our patch, so it doesn't matter mentality has got to stop. The failure to understand these networks after the 9-11 attack and to penetrate them with intelligence sources now looks to have been a very grave mistake.